Very good. Good. All right. <clears throat> um, I don't remember if we did this last week, but we can do it again. This is what's this? This is should be Mimer test Vov. That's right. Did we do this yesterday? Yes, we did this last time. We did this. Yes, I think so too. Yes, we did this. Okay. So let's just do the next one here like this. That went the wrong way. Very good. And <clears throat> Dalit. Oh, oh, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. Dalit. <clears throat> right. did, did we do Dalit? I think we, maybe we did Dalit also. So we do hey. Let's just do the, the, the summary of Dalit. The summary of Dalit. Good. <clears throat> so now we're on chapter. Uh, chapter 15, and how do they call it? Chapter, they call it Mimer. Mimer 15, chapter 3, chapter 4. This is chapter 4. This is chapter 4, and I think we did it last time. But let's just do the summary of chapter 4. Okay, what the Rebbe here is praising very highly <clears throat> simplicity and how simplicity carries with it a certain type of genuineness. Talking about a Jew that he doesn't, I mean, learning the Torah is, is of utmost importance in Judaism. God gave the Torah to the Jews and in, in Mount Sinai. That was the whole reason they were in Egypt and they got out of Egypt, amazing miracles, and they received the Torah. And the Torah, as, it's, as it was given on Mount Sinai, is basically not understandable. You really can't understand I mean, it's in a way, it's even it's even they say more misleading than not understandable. If it's not understandable, so you know you don't understand it. If you read the Torah as it is, you think maybe you do understand it. You can sort of make up your own understandings. And let's take the ten, the first just the Ten Commandments. Um, uh, keep the Sabbath Sabbath day. What does it mean? Keep the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. So it's it simply you have to remember it, right? You have to. In addition to the fact that who's going to tell you how to translate the Hebrew, what the Hebrew words mean, you know, so you have to have some sort of an explanation. But you can, let's say, once you know what the Hebrew words mean, so you look and you can see the explanation, you can make believe that you understand everything, right? And and say, you know, keeping Sabbath, it means you know, just take a day and say, I remember this is the holy Sabbath day. Just that's it. But that's not so. That's not what God wanted. God does not want you to just take a day. He wants you, there's a specific day and this day comes in at a certain exactly time when the sun sets and there are things that are forbidden one moment after that sun sets. You can't tie a knot. You can't uh, write a letter. Those things are not written in the Torah. <clears throat> You're not allowed to dig a hole. You're not allowed to plant a tree. You can't uh, harvest your land. You can't, right? All these things are not written clearly in the Torah, but that's what God wants. So learning the Torah is very, very important. And understanding the Torah is very, very important. But what about Jews that they don't know how to learn the Torah? They can't, they, they don't even understand the words of prayer. They don't understand anything. They just, they know how to say the words, but they don't know what, it, and nevertheless, they pray with a certain genuine. So he says, that is a certain, <clears throat> that is a certain uh, quality that has to be admired. It has to be admired and it has to be even copied. And to a certain degree, we're going to learn in the next chapter, the next, uh, that that's a quality that sometimes is lacking by people who really do know how to learn, those very valuable people that can tell us what the Torah really means. It could be that sometimes they're lacking this humility. So that's what the Rebbe is saying. Milet ofen avodat Hashem shall ish pashim. He talked about the high quality of a person and that of serving God with simplicity. But they're a Kabbalah oil in a way which is called accepting the yoke. Accepting the yoke, this is just, a, it's a term which is referring to serving God the same way like an ox is attached to a wagon. 
And the ox has absolutely no idea what the driver wants. But by means of pulling the wagon, the driver couldn't do it on his own. By means of harnessing this ox, as the ox does things for the master that benefits everybody. It benefits the ox, it benefits the master, right? If not, the ox would just go free. And who knows, after a short amount of time, it would get eaten by lions or fall off a cliff or run over by a truck or something. And the ox, because it's, it's owned by an owner, so the owner takes good care of it. But first of all, the ox has to be connected to the owner. Now, the ox doesn't know what an owner is. It doesn't. It would never plow a field on its own. So you have to put on this ox an ol, what's called the you'll call it a yoke. And that's you. The, the, the difference, of course, is, is that we have to take this yoke and put it on ourselves. If we say we want to be attached to God. I understand less about God than the ox understands about the owner. The ox and the owner have some things in common, like the, they, they both eat, right? They both walk on the ground. They both have their different needs, right? They, 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 they're afraid of death. They want to live. They run from pain. They go to pleasure. There are certain things which are common in an animal and a human being. But with us, with God, there's nothing. We don't have anything in common. How, how can we link ourselves up? That's the whole idea of the Torah. <clears throat> but even more so, how you do the Torah. It's the, the Torah, a person can learn the Torah and thinks he's got God in his back pocket. He conquered it. He knows the whole Torah. He knows all the secrets, he knows all the Kabbalah, he knows everything. So it could be that he's lacking this basic thing of called Kabbalah all. But the fact of the matter is, is that he's just as far away from what God is, as far as understanding what God is, as a cat is. A cat, at least a cat and him are in the world. God is creating the whole world. It's impossible to understand what God is. So, but because you can understand some aspects of God, and you can understand the Torah of God, you can understand some ideas, which that's a wonderful thing, and it's a necessary thing. But it could be that a person will make a big mistake of this. It'll go to his head. Allah, but a ben Torah. Therefore, a simple person, because he has this Kabbalah soul, he has an advantage out people who learn the Torah. Well, Befrat, and especially those people who not only learn the Torah, but they also work at prayer. Right? They learn Hasidut, and they learn how to think deeply about what God is, and they get inspired, and they arouse their heart, and they love God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your might, which you're supposed to do. And these people who pray, Yishlam Tainu, to get a prayer, from their understanding. And these people who understand the Torah well, or they pray, and they have a, a grasping of ideas about God, so they get excited. The Isha Pasha, but a simple person, Levadju Bitsara Laheder Yadiya, not only is he uh, pained by the fact that he doesn't even know what he's saying when he's praying, but who meet Payash, even though in more he could be ashamed. You know, I don't really understand who these people sit and they close their eyes and they can sing Nigunim and they can pray for hours, and which is a wonderful thing. The problem is, is that when they stop praying, these people, it could be that they come to a little bit of haughtiness, egotism. Look at me, I, look what I just achieve, achieved. In a very, very refined way, they think they're better than other people. It creeps in. Okay, that's what we got up to last time. Let's, let's now go further. Am I going the right way? I forget which, which was. Uh, yeah. He may behold, a Ben Torah person who learns Torah, she will made Torah that he learns Torah be in Godel. He learns Torah with great idea day depth. The data the Dabar Halacha to know what the law is, Shul Omeh that he's learning. The Kol Pirtei Dinim, Dina, and all of the details, the Var the Var Alofano. He learns all the laws and he knows every single detail of every law. The two Tam the and he knows very well. The Kama Shito the Rishonim, how the Ran looks at it, how the Rosh looks at it, how the Rif looks at it, all these different Rishonim, the Rambam, or Machadish Kadushim, and he can even find new connections. And he has straight ideas. He's a, a, a great thinker. Now, this is a very wonderful thing. In Judaism, it's a really very wonderful and praiseworthy thing. And also, this person doesn't only learn the Torah, but he also works at understanding God. He realizes that it's God's Torah. And he, he understands when he, when he prays, he really attaches himself. He really feels the oneness of God. 
Arichos is bonerus, right? He, he doesn't, he feels that he himself, I'm just a creation of God, how amazing God is. He thinks deeply, Beit HaTefila, Be'inyanim, the Penim Torah, he thinks in deep ideas of the secrets, the mysteries of the Torah that he learned. That's what a Hasidut is. A person that does that, it's wonderful. It's great, he understands the Torah, he's a deep thinker. He understands prayer, he's giving his heart over to God. That's the way it's supposed to be. So the whole the Torah and the prayer is felt in the innerness of his heart, of his heart, and it is, how do you say, accepted by him. It's absorbed by him. In a good understanding. Their Indian bird by him, their hair on Lake Zich by him, good up. It's, it's accepted by him, and it's, <clears throat> and it's, uh, how do you say, it's very, uh, like, it's, it's like, it's an axiom by him. It's, it's an obvious, simple thing. You ever go, sometimes you can go, there's people who understand their craft, understand that there's, there's, there's uh, garage mechanics, that they understand a car really well. They turn on the motor, listen on the motor, oh, you got something wrong with your, this piston. Right, rev the motor up, eh, it's your distributor. Immediately, they know the whole thing. They, they, they got the whole picture. It's all laid up by them. Well, how a car works. There's some professors that are like that Med in medicine, right? You come to check it over here. You no, know, all the other professors, they can't figure out what's going on. I know what's going on. <clears throat> Do you eat uh, a, a tutti frutti ice cream? Yeah. So, well, that's it. That's what does it. You'll have heart palpitations and you'll have heart tramp breathing. And this is, I thought I had to make an operation. No, because the doctor has this overlook, this overview of the whole thing. He gets it well. Well, there's some people that are like that with the Torah, that the whole Torah by them, they just understand things, or at least one aspect of the Torah, some law. There are rabbis like that, that the expert in, in uh, marital laws, in, in proprietary laws, and damages. It's just they know everything that there is to know. And there's people who know Hasidut. They, they understand all these upper worlds. <clears throat> it's very, 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 how do you say, uh, 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 accepted. It's part of him. The Behergish Zeh, Nasa Bamoho. This idea is now a part of his brain. In other words, this is how the world is. He sees it. We can see clearly that there's two ways. That there's two ways that a person can contemplate uh, ideas. Deep, to go deep into ideas. Yeish, Mishal, Omeri, Zasugi. Some people, they can learn some idea in the Talmud or in Hasidut, and they look into it very, very deeply. And they can learn it so that every idea that they learn, they internalize. When he looks into it, it becomes like part of him. That he's, that he's, that he's um, looking into and contemplating. Abel calls this, excuse me, this was a nice one. Abel, but calls uh, all of this this is only in the time when he's really thinking about it. He's really delving into his thinking of but after he learns this idea and he understands it very well, and he goes to learn something else, right? Like for instance, he's learning the laws of Pesach. So he learns the laws of Pesach very well. And then afterwards he turns his mind and he learns the laws of damages, something else. He forgets all the depth that he had in learning the laws of Passover that he had at the time when he was looking into it. But, and there's a person can learn very deeply, he's very de deeply into it, but as soon as he's not involved in it, he just doesn't, it, it's just not, uh, how do you say, it doesn't stick by him. The whole idea that he had known so well before, so that goes away. But if a person learns something in such a way, but if a person learns something that it becomes part of his reality, then 
he is interested in it and he knows it just like the first time. It's always fresh by him. The idea is always fresh. So in other words, a person, he learns the laws of Passover, whatever, and he knows it very well, but it's really, he really understands it very deeply and foundationally. What is the, what is the, the whole foundation of the law, especially in the Altar Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. You can see this a lot. He explains the line, explains the reasons also. He says, then a person, he gets this, he gets the whole point. So then it's like part of reality, right? It's part of reality, but it's like the, the, the mechanic, he knows how the, the car works. By him, it's an automatic thing. The zoo, yavoda, gadola, ba'avoda, salev. To do this with the Torah, and especially if you're doing a thinking about God, this requires a lot of effort with your brain and a lot of effort with your heart. Baricha to be boner, be tefila, in long, deep thinking. Ine kashir mechzik tova latzmo bezer. So he does it, and he learns, and he's wonderful, and he understands, and he can explain, and he's a nice person, but. It could be that he'll feel himself to be superior because of this. And it's very difficult to avoid this. They say that the Baal Shem Tov, right before he passed away, that his last words were, Al regal gaiva. God, please do not bring me to any sort of, how do you say, haughtiness, egotism. That he can say at the last moment, wow, you know, I'm better than everybody else. And he really was. Right? He really was. It's very, very difficult for a person not to compare himself with other people, especially if he's a, a high person. People love it, right? People love it. My, one of my teachers, Rabbi Medlop Wotabas, he told me that the, the, the Bala Gala, the, the, the wagon driver, now it used to be, it used to be the taxi driver was the, only for people that had the lowest of IQ. Because back then a taxi didn't have to know any streets and there was no traffic. It was one road from one town to another, and you just got behind the horse and you just looked at the back side of the horse the whole way and just went. That's it. And the horse just went straight, and you just were there to make sure that the horse didn't go off the path or it didn't fall down or something. <clears throat> so it said, Rabbi Menelputa said, the, 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 the wagon driver, what does he say? No one hits the horses like I do when the whips snaps to whips. No one can snap that whip like I do. Because everyone wants to compare himself to everybody else and think that he's really superior. And if he, they, he's not superior either, he gets all depressed or he gets all angry, he gets drunk or whatever. He, people like to have, feel better than everybody else, superior than everybody else. He says, this goes by everybody, even by the Baal Shem Tov. He said he had to pray that he didn't come to this. It's the biggest praise of Moses was the most humble person in the world. And it was the most humble person in the world. Why? Because he had to constantly be aware that everything he had only came from the creator. But if he didn't really work on that, I mean, I can't, I can't put myself in Moses' place. But if he didn't really work on it, automatically you come to think that you're somehow or other better than someone else. It's just, it's too a good of a feeling. It, it, it's so... How do you say secure to feel their comfort zone, like they say? Kasher Maxi Tova, if a person starts to think, wow, you know, God really owes me something, I'm really great. Shabachar Lo, Lavoda, Meshkita, that I have decided to work with learning Torah and also Babur Salev, I put all my energy into that. It's called Shechen Shemit Yair, and how much more so if he brags about it? Arihu. Kore Shoche Latzma, he destroys himself and he can fall down because of this. Like a person that falls himself into a muddy pit. His body becomes totally lower than everybody else. That he's walking on the face of the earth. Also he can fall into egotism. Was what's what's going on over here? What happened? This person, because he really is superior in learning Torah, he's superior. When it comes to praying, he's really a superior. The ideas kept by him. Everybody's asking him questions. He knows all the answers. But what happens after he finishes praying? After this, is everybody's walking around normal and they can do it, but him not. Him not. He's always walking around thinking, listen, people don't give me enough honor. People don't stand up when I come in. You know, people don't listen to me. People know this. 
but I don't, I don't get the, 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 the attention that I'm supposed to get. How could he be chosen to be the Rosh Hashiv and I'm not chosen? Everything he does is becomes, there was once a person that came to the Rebbe and said, in, in my braid, in my, the place where I'm learning, that everybody steps on you. And the Rebbe said that everybody steps on you because you spread yourself all over the floor. And was, every person that does anything, you think that it's relating to you. This person that just a minute earlier, he was understanding the whole Torah, giving everybody answers. But he's, I remember once I saw, I saw, it happened to be that it wasn't in a Chabad place, but I imagine this could also be in a Chabad. I don't know, I've never seen it happen, but anyway. And there was this huge learning room, massive, massive auditorium, one of the best known in the world. Beautiful place with this huge uh, ark, you know, Kodesh. And the rabbis were sitting up in the front. The rabbis were all like, you know, white beards and immaculately dressed. And they were sitting there and the pupils were coming and asking questions. And there was, there, there were poor people that came around and they would ask these everybody for money. So they would give them like, you know, 10 agarot, whatever it was. One of these rabbis, a poor person came up to him. I saw it with my own eyes. The poor person came up to him <clears throat> and you know, these poor people, they haven't got much manners and they haven't got much intellect either, a lot of them. <clears throat> so this man had these 10 agarot. 10 agarot is one tenth of a, of a shekel. I mean, back then, who knows, each it was worth I mean, a quarter, something like that, each one. And this rabbi had a, a whole line of them, like about 10 of them, and it, every poor person would come. He would give a poor person one of them. Well, this poor person came up, and this rabbi was in the other direction, was turning the other direction, talking to somebody, and this poor person was standing there, standing there, standing there, and he was explaining, explaining, and another boy came up afterwards, and he explained to him, this poor person was standing there, standing there, waiting, and he didn't know should he go. Is the, is the I saw what was happening. You know, he was in this dilemma: is the rabbi going to stop in another second? So the poor person just took like half of these coins and he just pushed it into his hand. And he took it. Well, the rabbi heard the clinging of the coins and he heard that it was more than one, and he got angry, and he stood up and he started yelling at this person and he called a couple of the boys. The 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 the, 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 the room was filled with them couple of the bigger boys, and he told them, you know, take him out. It was like, you know, <laughs> give him a hit job. <laughs> take him out. And they took this guy, and he was just sort of, you know, he didn't know what to say. He was just crying. They just took him out. They gave him the bums watch. You know, they threw him out. I saw this person got really, you know, <laughs> really angry. So sometimes, and I don't doubt that for the person to be sitting in the front of this well, very prestigious you know, uh, prestigious yeshiva, as he was obviously a very talented person and he had devoted a lot of his time, but he lost it. He just totally lost it. You know, things didn't go the way he wanted to. He says a person like that, he can be chaser das. He can be, lose everything that he has. Not only that does it make that his Torah is worth nothing, but also the prayer that he does with long thinking and deeply, that doesn't even come to the heels of a simple person that prays and says <clears throat> psalms in a way of Kabbalah so that doesn't even know what he's saying. Because here we're talking about, what are we talking about? Connecting to God. And because nobody really understands God, you can't understand God. You can understand certain aspects of God. You can understand certain ideas about God. And because of that, you can fulfill the commandment of loving God with all of your heart, because that's all we've got. We understand with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, and you must try to do this. But after you finish doing it, you have to understand <clears throat> that it's only God's mercy that he allowed us to understand certain small aspects of his oneness so that we can have love of him. But this is just God's kindness. Don't think that in any way that we can compare ourselves and be better than somebody else or that we've got more God than the other person does. Because in a way, this person that knows he doesn't understand anything, He's living in a world where he doesn't understand God. And that's the way he is. And this person thinks that he does understand God. Right? That he does understand God. And the fact is he understands these ideas that God wants him to understand. Yes. But don't think that that in any way means that he's closer to God or that he's grasped more of God. He just has more ideas in his mind about godliness. That's what it says. 
Gaivas Adam Tashpilenu. That's what it says in, in Proverbs. The egotism of a person knocks him down. The gaiva, sometimes they say the, the pride before the fall. The gaiva oseth adam l'shefel. That a person that has egotism, haughtiness, this makes him very low. That if a person is egotistical, he feels himself to be superior in any way, he thinks that something is coming to him because of who he is. So this blemishes the two first letters of the name of God, Yud and He. But God's name has four letters. Because Gaiva comes to Tetvav. In general, the, the Rebbe, he's not going to talk about this. Now, anger, anger, getting angry. That's the story that I told you about angry, but it's the same thing as egotism. It's the same thing. Why does a person get angry? Because he thinks that he's the king of the universe. Things have to go the way I want, or things don't go the way I want. Good, there are certain times when you're supposed to get angry, right? Certain times when you're supposed to get angry, Right, somebody's coming to the to, 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 to <clears throat> you know you have to fight a war, something that and these people are evil people and they want to kill everybody, so you can get angry at a mullik or whatever it is. But anger can consume you, and also usually people don't get angry because of a commandment of God. They get angry because somebody's messing with me. What's the proof? If they would mess with somebody else, you wouldn't get angry. Right? Someone would cut somebody else off when they're driving, you wouldn't get road right. You only get road rage if somebody cuts you off. And so it's the same type of a thing as gaiva, haughtiness. Kasva gaiva. Yud Aleph, that's ki gaiva, the word gaiva, if you add up the number, the value of the numbers is three and one and six and five, you get 15. That's the first two letters of God's name, Yud and K. Right? Three and, and one is four and six is 10 and five is 15. That's the number Yudke. In other words, gaiva means egotism, is it the bad egotism? Shapagam megia lebechinas Yudke. And a pagam reaches that the, the blemish that is occurred, that is, what is it, incurred, huh? that's right, by the word, by, by, by the haughtiness, by uh, egotism, it wrecks up the letter Yudke in your soul. Asher Mizem, moving. And in the feel of so how low the person falls down in his service. Shari Avoda, so he, Al Yadei Bechin is Chachma Bina. This person, we're talking about the person who understands God, that's Chachma, and he understands godliness, so he gets excited, that's Chachma and Bina. Right? Chachma means he has the right concept, the right definition of what God is, and Bina means he has the right understanding. Ubanafsho and his soul, that corresponds to the UK Chachma and Bina of his soul. Um, no, but this is only the level of Yudke within his soul. And a pagam, but the blemish that he makes is not only in his soul, Shabogam al Yudei Gaiva, that he <clears throat> makes this blemish by means of his feeling of superiority, of his egotism, selfishness. Hari hu pogam, the begin is Yudke, Shalom This, so to speak, even makes a blemish in God's name, the creator. Not just God's name as it is in your soul. Which this is incomparable to what a person, what do we say? You should know that everything is the above, it comes from you. So you can have a tremendous effect, whether for good or for not good. <clears throat> so a person does a little bit of good, it has a tremendous effect. So it changes the whole heavens. Changes the whole heavens. But if a person, God forbid, does the opposite, it also... Because that's the way that God set it up. God reacts to what we do. I say, Hashem Tzilchat says, God is your shadow. The whole entire creation was only made for this, the, the, the last hay of God's name. The last hay of God's name, that's God's speech. <clears throat> and the Yud, that was the first letter of God's name, Nivra Olam has created the heavens. Shu Tashlum Schar Alavoda Nikia. So this is another way of Yud and Hey. 
We said Yud Hey is Chacham and Bina. That's the first two letters, Yud and Hey. And now we're saying it's Yud, and this is the Hey. <clears throat> this is the last letter of God's name. God's name has two Hey's in it, right? Yud and then Hey and then Vav and then Hey. Oh, Bishat Nafsho, Shemit Yaher, this person that he brags, are you Pogem be Yud Ke Kuli? He thinks he's really better. And because of that, he blemishes the name Yud Ke. And I have to say that all the people who were my teachers, that was the thing that, that inspired me more than, you know, I didn't particularly look for people who were geniuses and, and, uh, and really high intellect. I mean, I'm not also, <laughs> and that is, but what I really was looking for was somebody who was, who was truthful, the emiss, that he didn't really hold from himself. And that's what these people were. And that when, when the previous uh, uh, mashpia in, in, in um, I guess it was, just, it was three mashpias ago, in Tom Ketimim of Kfar Chabad, his name was Rabbi Shlomo Chaim Kesselman. Shlomo Chaim Kesselman. And he was a genius, a genius in every aspect of the Torah. And he would pray, and he was just this he just beautiful face, and he looked like just you know a rabbi from you know two thousand years ago, a glowing face, a beautiful smile. He cared about people who was and, and he intellect, tremendous intellect. He knew my morim, and you could ask him everywhere. And when he passed away, so they came to the Rebbe with a whole list of other uh, replacements. Other people in Chabad that were also geniuses and then they knew the Torah and they knew and the people who went, they knew because there were a lot of people in Chabad that people didn't know about. <clears throat> that they were, uh, this, and these, the, one, the ones who went to the Rebbe, they knew about all these people. You know? And the Rebbe said, well, what about Mendel Futabas? Well, Mendel Futabas wasn't even on the list. And they understood that that's what he wanted. Now, Mendel Futabas, he had been in Siberia and he, before that, he helped <coughs> in communist Russia tremendous self-sacrifice, <clears throat> gathering up money for the school secretly and helping people to get out and forging passports for people to get out. And just the, the acts of, of bravery and self, <clears throat> uh, self-sacrifice <clears throat> that we only know, you know, a tenth of a percent of them. Because most of them also, we couldn't let anybody know because they, they would find out, the government would find out. And a lot of people that he helped, they got killed. So, and just miraculously, he didn't. So, and that was the whole thing with him, that he had this, this um, truth that he didn't really hold from himself at all, not whatsoever. It was really quite astounding. It was quite, really quite astounding. The, 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 the naturalness and the, if you want to call it a, a natural sort of humor that he had in regarding to life. And the amazing seriousness that he had about Judaism that always came out in a positive way. It was always positive. It was no, but he was very, very strict with himself, tremendously strict with himself. Strict with himself. I don't know if he even used to sleep. Because anytime I would go over to his house, he was always like, okay, hurry. So that's the idea of humility. Hurry, Zagamke and Garua. So a person that doesn't have this humility, if he has egotism <clears throat> that he holds <clears throat> from himself, that he really thinks that he's something special. And that everybody has to listen to him, right? And everybody has to give him honor. Hari this is very, very bad. This is even worse, much worse than a person who's a total ignoramus, the shoot person, like we said before. So this is talking about a person not only is a bow guy, but he also brags about it. That not only that, she is a puzzle. That he prays. A simple person, he prays and he says psalms. In a zeo koko, that's all that he can do. He's serving God. The simple person, he's serving God with everything he's got. The ma'achasha eno maybe because this simple person, it doesn't doesn't have a high IQ, or at least it doesn't have a high IQ as far as literature reading. It could be that he's the biggest genius in the world in in mathematics or in you know in in uh, there were people like that I knew. That they were amazing geniuses in mathematics, they did nothing. They even would teach people. They could teach when the people came. <clears throat> but as far as learning Torah, it just wasn't in a ma So the person he, he just doesn't have a head for it. What can he do? Hine Lavadzo, not only that, Hari Gufa etzema Vodaso, Hubadera Kabbalah Sol, not only that, 
But everything he does, not only is he brokenhearted, the simple person, because he doesn't understand anything, but the whole service that he does serve God is this total service, this total devotion to Hashem, which is beyond any sort of intellect. It doesn't care if he loses, if he wins, it doesn't touch him. But note it's known, the Abuda, the Kabbalah soul, this service, serving God, <clears throat> which what's called the accepting of the yoke of the kingship of heaven, the Avoda Nailit This is a very, very high thing. This is very, very high. Like I said, that's why it says by most Moses, the greatest praise that the Torah gives him is that he was the most humble person in the world. Aish Moshe, Anav Mikol Adam is more humble than anybody in the world. The Lochim, therefore, Kadma Shema Yeah, that's why we say Shema comes before Yeah, in Shemoa. And that's why the first chapter of the time of, of Shema Yisrael, the first paragraph, Shema comes first before Bahaya Im Shemoa, the second. There's three paragraphs in the Shema that we say. <clears throat> the last paragraph that was sort of stuck on. That was the, 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 the God took this out of Egypt, the Batsitsis said. <clears throat> that was sort of stuck. But the first two are talking about serving God with all of your heart and all of your soul. <clears throat> and the first uh, the paragraph talks about also serving God with all of your might, <clears throat> with all your being. So this is Shema comes before Bahaya Im Shema. Im Shema, that's the second paragraph. In order that a person should accept on himself the yoke of heaven first, that that's the foundation of all serving God. Kamosha al Yasod Omar Abinian, just like on the foundation, the whole building stands also. Kabbalat all, this is the foundation of Judaism, of serving God. You want to learn Torah, you're going to do the commandments in order to go to heaven. Very nice. At least you're doing the commandments. But you should know that that's not a genuine reason to serve God. You're not really serving God, you're serving yourself. You want to serve God for what you're going to get. So it's not really, you're not necessarily, you, you're learning the Torah because you're good at it. You're good at learning the Torah and everybody praises you and you enjoy learning the Torah. It's tremendously enjoyable to learn the Torah. Tremendously enjoyable. You learn what Rashi says and what Tosu says, all these different opinions. It's very enjoyable. If you're an intellectual person, you know, it's like people who love crossword puzzles. Crossword puzzles, they go crazy, crossword puzzles. People who love chess, ooh, they go crazy. Why? Because it's intellectual. Some people like the Torah for the Havdil for the same reason, because it's intellectual pursuit. It's very, very deep. I mean, it puts like chess and these things in a small pocket. It's just tremendously, you know, amazingly complicated and it fits it together. And the, the opinions that you're reading are, are the opinions of people who are pure, pure, holy people that were totally devoted to God, totally devoted to, to God. And they just happen to have tremendous intellects. And the people that you're reading, the Ran, the Rift, the Rishonim, the Achronim, these are people that, that were the, the holy people. What can we say? And you're learning their ideas, their opinions. They're, it's so amazingly deep. So he says, nevertheless, the foundation of the whole Torah is not the understanding. Understanding is necessary. That's the building. But the foundation of it is you have to believe that there's God. And you have to understand that you do not understand God. You can't understand God that you're so lucky that God gave us the Torah that we can put like a yoke on our, on our necks and that the reason you're learning the Torah is because God said to. We learned that today in the Chumash class, didn't we? Oh, you were in the Chumash class? So it says about Aram, the Bayaski and Aram, that Aram did what God said when he lit the candles. So the Ramban says that the greatness was is that Aaron didn't light the candles because they were so holy and he understood all the secrets and because he was so holy and he was such a great person. He did it because God said, that's the only reason. Which a person becomes haughty and he thinks that <clears throat> he deserves some sort of a reward. So this indicates that all that he did, he's really just serving himself. He was never serving God at all. It's like all the other pleasures in the world. He's doing everything for himself. Just happens that he doesn't like uh, you know, to eat a steak or to drive a motorcycle or take drugs or something like that. He likes to learn Torah. That's good. That's a very good thing. 
He likes to learn Torah, certainly better than you know taking drugs, and there's no doubt about it, driving your motorcycle. But if he's doing it for the wrong reason, he's learning Torah for the wrong reason, then he's missed the whole point of life. He's missed the whole point of why he's created. <clears throat> if he's learning Torah for himself, that it's just like any other pleasure, like eating or drinking, sleeping. The sense that a person is only thinking about what type of reward am I going to get? Hari mahapech kol avoda, he transfers everything that he does for his own pleasure. Well, avas atzmo and loving himself. Well, milavad not only shilafiza according to this avoda ain't avoda klal he's not really serving God. Like the joke, I think I must have told this joke fifteen times, but I'll tell you it again. The man is sitting in the restaurant and he's eating fish with both hands. A religious guy, he's got a bib around. These <clears throat> people are watching him. He's oblivious; doesn't care what anybody thinks. He loves the fish so much. <clears throat> the rabbi happens to come in. He goes over to him and says, "Mr. Grace, what are you doing? You're sh making a shame of yourself, and you're embarrassing the whole synagogue. Everybody knows you're the president of my synagogue. Stop it!" The rabbi he says, "Rabbi, what can I tell you? I just love fish." He says, "Mr. Grace, you're a liar." Excuse me, rabbi. He says, "I'm telling you, you're a liar." Liar, how did that how did where did that come from? What does it mean to the liar? I, I love the fish, said Mr. Grace. If you love the fish, you would let the fish eat you. The reason you're eating the fish is because you love yourself. It's the same thing. The reason he loves the Torah because he, he eats the because he loves himself. So he wants to get the more he can. Right? If he would love, if he would really love the Torah, if he would love, really love God, then he would give himself over to God. Not that he wanted to take God and, and swallow him. If so, this person blemishes his soul, and he soils himself very much. In fact, in, in a way, it would be better if he would just, in one way, it says that if your person learns Torah for the wrong reason, then it's better than not learning the Torah at all. It's better, because eventually, maybe he'll get the right reason, and then all the Torah that you learn will be good. But on the other hand, you've realized it's like it says in, the, in chapter 24 of the Tanya, it's like taking the head of a king and sticking his face into a toilet that you didn't flush the water down yet from the toilet before the, after uh, someone went to the bathroom. You take the head of the king and put the fa his face in the toilet, even for a moment. He's taking the Torah, the Holy Torah, and he's the Torah, and he's using it as a tool to make himself into a, 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 a monster, an egotist. It says because if a person learns the Torah and he becomes even a little bit egotistical, so it's like a person, the king, and he has a little stain, right? The president of the United States appears on the television and he's got a big stain, even a little stain, you know, on his tie. Ah, come on. How are you, Guru Yota? This is worse than if it's on the garment of a simple person. Can you? And also it's understood in the Nimshal, what, the, what I'm trying to get to. That which why a simple person, it's not considered to be such a sin, an egotist, so he's egotistical, right? It's a bad character trait, not a sin. But if a great rabbi, a scholar, shalom, that he learns and he prays, but the vacus, he's clinging to God, this is considered to be a oven it's considered to be a capital punishment, a capital crime. Egotism by a, a great rabbi, by a, this, this is a capital crime. Uh, nothing more shameful than that. Like the rabbis say, that God, God he, he is, how do you say, exacting by this person like a, like a hair. He deviates. Like it says, so it says that the person who's a big Talmud Chacham and he learns and he does and he does even the smallest thing that's wrong, that's infinitely worse than if a simple person does it. This, by the way, is another reason why not to think about heaven and hell. Because it could be that you learn Torah and you do these big commandments and you're, you're, you're a, sure, a sure thing for going into hell. If we're going to heaven, I'm sorry. For sure, no doubt about it, you're going to go to heaven. You only did good deeds. You never did any sins whatsoever. You're always learning and helping and this and that. And it could be at the last moment you do something like this, you get 
angry or you show yourself to be an egotist or whatever, and it wrecks the whole thing up because you were so great. If you would have been a simple person and you got angry or you lost your, you became depressed or you said the wrong thing. So, okay, a simple guy, what do you want from mixed mistake? But you're supposed to be a big rabbi. You're the example of what the Torah does to a person. Uh, you're the example of the purity and the, 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 the power of the Torah. And you acted like an animal even for a second. It took everything and it wrecked the whole thing. You became, you, you became the representative of a fool. All the rabbis are fools because of what you did. That's what it looks like. Shari, Isha Moni, a simple person, Yochala, so common to worry, can make things, do things, Machmas had a deal because of, but he just doesn't know. Because he lacks knowledge, Bhavana, so on, or understand it. He knows very well how he should be careful, but he just couldn't control himself. And the, the punishment, which is known regarding those people who don't know, it's understood to everybody. But the Onish Ha Yodea, Legabi, Sheenu Yodea, the punishment for people who sin when they knew what they were doing was wrong, to those who didn't know, move and call, you couldn't understand. It's, very, it's easily to understand. A person, a godal, look all the godal, yoter, harbet, a person that knows all the laws and he went against them, even if it was by accident. But his punishment is much greater than a person who doesn't know the laws and he does it on purpose. He just didn't know. There are certain things that if he does so, is not disgracing God by means of them. Which is not because a Talmud Chacham, right? You see a regular person in the street gets mad, starts screaming at his kids or something, the screen yells at his wife, eh, not nice, disgusting. But you see a big rabbi is dressed up nice, he yells at his wife. What's this? Even, even just one word, right? Just he yells at her about. Keep quiet. Oh, ooh, the, a big rabbi. People saw it. What type of a thing is this? So he couldn't control himself. Well, come on, Rabbi Sin, like the rabbis say in the Gemara Brachas, Kagon Ana, Ishak Lina, Bisra Mitabcha Kuli. It says over there, one of the big Talmudi Chacham. He says, if I take meat from a, from a butcher, something like that, and I, what, he doesn't put it in a, in a, a bag or whatever, you look and see what it is. The came, but the Varim should be in a Lamakum also things which between a person and God, right? You take a big Talmud Chacham, you see him eat a pizza in the street, right? He's, he's eating at an outdoor restaurant. He eats pizza in the street. You're not supposed to eat in the street. But everybody does it. But he's a big Talmud Chacham. He's the rabbi of the community. You can't do that. Right? So it says also things between man, man and God. That's what it says, that God is very demanding from the big Talmud Chachamim, just things between him and them. Okay, now we're learning this word, Talmud Chachamim. We're learning these laws, so what's the solution? The solution is humility. That's the solution. Think more about God. Don't think so much about yourself. Hello, Torah, a person who learns Torah with great depth, and he contemplates God when he's praying with great with deep and long contemplation. And he grasps these ideas about God until until it's really clinging to him. He feels the oneness of God. He feels the goodness of God. A muscle rishon. As soon as he thinks about it, this person, as great as he is and as wonderful he is, but in Maxi Tov, if he's a little bit egotistical, Garua, he's worse Michasr Das. He's worse than a person that doesn't know anything. Amit because a person who is egotistical, Pogan, the Yudke, he blemishes the first two letters of God's name, Yudke. And that is what's called Kabbalat Ol Malchashem. What is the solution? The solution is realizing how lucky you are to be alive, to be created, that God gave us the Torah, that you're a Jew, that you're a human being. Here he's talking about Jews. 
that you're a Jew, you have the Torah, think it's just an amazing gift, an amazing miracle. Don't hold any benefit to yourself. This is the foundation of serving God, all Malchut Shemayim. This is the foundation of God, accepting the yoke of heaven. This is the basis of Judaism. As we'll talk about more, God willing, next week. So what do we learn? The importance of humility and the severity of haughtiness, egotism. <clears throat> and the solution is accepting the yoke of heaven and serving God. Even with your great intellect, you do it only because this is what God wants. And you're gifted, so that's, that's, it's a gift that God gave. There's no reason to feel haughty about that. Have a good week. Thank you very much. God bless you. And we should all be dancing with Mashiach now. Amen. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Shalom. Shabbat Tov. Shabbat Tov.